here. I'm here to do my February reading wrap up. I actually had a pretty good reading month in February. Um, I wound up reading, let me make it, let me look at my notes. I wound up reading 14 books and I'm actually in the middle of two, which I will finish early in March. So I just wanted to dive into it. This, this, this month was, this month, even though it's a shorter month, I do have a week off, um, and I actually had prepped a lot of stuff, so I felt like I wasn't working all weekend, which is nice, but let's dive into the books that I wound up reading. Um, I did wind up reading You Say It First by Katie Catugno. This is a book that I picked up at ALA. It comes out in June, um, and this follows these two characters, Meg and Colby. They live totally different lives. Meg is very adamant that she wants to work in a political arena for her life. Um, she's dealing with a lot of, like, family drama. Um, and Colby is the opposite. He's very much not like Meg. He has no interest in politics. Um, and he's kind of dealing with the aftermath of, like, a family crisis. Um, and their paths wind up crawling when she winds up cold calling him to make sure that he's, um, make sure that he's registered to vote. And they wind up having a very, like, intense conversation that wind up leading them to, like, a friendship and possibly more. I think that this is such a... It was just such a fun read. I really enjoyed it. I thought that it dealt with politics and listening to people with other beliefs in a very, like, a very interesting way. And I really, really liked it. I like both characters. I like how we really got into both characters' heads. I've said this before and I'll probably say it again. I love books where, like, you get to be in both characters' heads because I think that you really learn both about both characters. I went up flying through this read, really enjoyed it. I would recommend that you check it out when it comes out in June. This I picked up from Epic or, um, yeah, Epic Reads, Balsa and Bray. And I really do want to read more books by her in the future. So yeah, so this was my first read of the month. My next read of the month was a graphic novel that I picked up um, at and ALA as well. And it's A Night in the Forest by Annie Watson. This comes out in July. Um, I will admit, I like this. I didn't love it. I think that the art style, I think, will help when it's in color because you get, like, a couple pages in the first that are all in color. But it basically follows this young boy who's adventuring back to bring his parents medicine because his parents are really, really sick. And he kind of gets trapped in this forest, and he winds up finding a knight in the forest and hopes the knight's able to help him. And he winds up going on a quest to try to get back to his parents. I liked it. I didn't love it. But I really like that they are coming out with a new imprint line. I thought that the pacing was a little bit awkward at points, but I did enjoy it. And I will probably be reading more of this imprint in the future. And I wound up giving this three stars. This book does come out in July. And I'll probably maybe get it out from the library just so I can look at the pretty pictures because the first art style was really, really nice. Um... The next thing that I wound up reading was a book called What I Carry by Jennifer Longo. I strained my voice a little bit at the tail end of the week, so it's a little bit sore, and that's why I'm going to try to make this video a little bit shorter than normal. Um, but I did wind up picking up this book. I will admit, I didn't love it as much as I was expecting to. But it basically follows this young girl. She's been in the foster care system for as long as she could remember. She's so afraid of becoming invested in anything because she just doesn't want to have her heart broken. She's six months away from being 18 and being phased out of the system. And she's very, very set that she is going to keep her path and not let anything dissuade her. But when a, when a group of people kind of comes into her life and the last foster home she's ever in kind of transforms it, it kind of changes her outlook. I liked it. I thought that it was really interesting. I like how it focused a lot on self-discovery. I just thought the, the the pacing and the structure of the book is just not as strong as I wanted it to be. And I didn't feel really connected to the character as much as I wanted to. But I wound up giving it three stars and I would definitely read more by her as an author in the future. I love that books that tackle like foster care and like adoption because I think that those are topics that you don't always talk about in YA literature so I thought that was really really interesting and I thought that it was a very like it was just it wasn't it wasn't a loud story I'll say that it was very very quiet and I think the pacing um was you know I think she was dealing with a lot and I think it kind of made her a little bit unlikable at points but I think that by the end you kind of grew to like her a lot um okay so the next book that I wound up finishing was Tell Me Three Things by Julie Buxom. This was a um, 
This was the second book I've read by Julie Buxton at this point. Um, and this follows a girl named um, Jessie. And I'm going to be a little bit choppy because my dad came in and interrupted my other clip. So sorry about that. But so this book follows uh, Jessie. She winds up moving in with her dad's new family in a town that she's unfamiliar with. She winds up getting an email from a, from a, a person that winds up offering to give her tips and tricks to survive in this new town. She winds up reluctantly taking him up on him. She kind of spends the whole book trying to figure out who this person is and if she can tell who they are in real life. Um, and it just deals with friendship, self-discovery, a lot of friendship stuff, a lot of family stuff too, a lot of dynamics between her and her dad. I did like it. I think I liked what, what to say next a little bit more. And I do have two other books to read her. I do have the previous one, and then a missions, which comes out in June, which I did get an arc of. So I'm, I'm definitely going to add that to my TBR. So I went up liking this book, not love it, and I went up giving it four stars. But she definitely is one of my new favorite authors that I will definitely be checking out more in 2020. That I went up reading was one that I was actually probably one of my favorites of the whole month, and that is Of Curses and Kisses by Sanaya Manan. This is the first book in her contemporary series, but it kind of has like a royalty twist. But it basically follows this girl named Princess Jayo and Lord Grey Emerson. Um, and they are dealing with their two feuding families. And they wind up going to this boarding school together. Jaya's sister is in the middle of a like a P, M, M, PR disaster. And Jaya is convinced that Grey's family is the one that executed this attack on her sister. So she makes it her mission to basically take Grey down and basically destroy him. And her only way to think of destroy him is to fall in love with him and then break his heart. However, things get totally blown out of proportion and a possible romance does develop between these two. This book does deal with a lot of diversity. It also deals with a lot of royalty themes. I really loved it. It also dealt with like what is expected of the royalty. And I think like especially recently with the whole Meghan Markle and Prince Harry thing, like when do you have to give up your life? And I think that that was an issue that Jaya had to deal with. Um, it definitely had major Beauty and the Beast inspired, but there was no real direct fantasy element, so I would definitely classify this as more of, like, a contemporary book, but it did have hints of, like, fantasy elements that were, like, hinted at. There was a curse that was mentioned, but it kind of, it, it, I would read it because go in with kind of an open mind. It kind of reminded me a little bit of, um, Broken Things by Lauren Oliver, like, a fantasy element kind of like that. But I wound up really liking it. I love the diversity. I love the characters. And I'm definitely going to be checking out book two and three in this series. I'm really excited to see who those books will follow. The next book that I wound up listening to, um, and this one was for the Time Warp YA book club, as was Tell Me Three Things. Um, that was Gemina by Amy Kaufman and Jay Crystal. The audiobooks for this and I this is probably one of my favorite books in that series because I love Hannah and Nick so much I'm actually listening to the third book as we're speaking right now but I'm really loving it I'm glad that the time warp YA book club chose this as a reread if you have not listened to the audiobooks I would highly recommend it even if you have listened to or read the other books read the books previously because the audiobook is full cast and it's just so well done um, this basically follows the second half of the Illuminae Files as they are trying to take down Baytech and you meet two new characters but you also reconnect with Katie and Ezra from book one and I'm just really really loved it. I enjoyed this book. I gave it five stars and it's definitely one of my favorite science fiction series to date. Um, the next book that I'm going to chat about in this video is A Match Made in Medity by Najanja Beinhart. I actually got this book over the summer. It was one of the arcs I didn't get at BEA, but I went up picking up on my own. I'm just going to read you guys the back. Matched. Looking for the perfect date. May felt high. Don't call. Don't swipe. Just get matched. It's easy. Fill in a profile. Take a fun quiz. Receive your personal icon. Find your top five matches in the most unlikely of places. This book follows Simi. Um, and her family actually is a matchmaker. That's what her family does. They match people all the time. Simi is very hesitant. She doesn't want to do that for her living, even though her family is convinced she has a talent for it. Um, her, her family is very hesitant to go into the 21st century. They don't think matching should be done online. They think you have to do it personally. But when Simi and her brother decide to take the app to their school, it kind of starts some drama and it kind of takes into account, can a quiz tell you who you, ha who you can be with? 
Like, does the probability of matching with someone mean you automatically have to be with them? And I think that that's so interesting, and I really wound up liking it. I thought the romances in this book, because there was actually quite a few that developed, reminded me a little bit of, when I read it, it was called Gal- 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 Galgorithm, but I think it's called You and Me and Us. I really like that book as well, but this is kind of like a similar concept. Normally, I love books that do with jobs. I love books that deal with, like, a different culture, which this, like, definitely does. It was a really, really fun read. I wound up giving this read, like, four stars, and I would definitely read more by this author in the future. And it was the perfect read for, um, around Valentine's Day. So, yeah, this was the next book that I wound up reading. Going along with my Valentine's Day read was The Bookworm Crush by Lisa Roberts. Brown Roberts. Um, this was actually a companion book. Um, the Replacement Crush is the first book, and I haven't actually read that one yet. But this book follows the name Amy and Toph, um, and they are connected to the characters in the first book. Um, but Amy is a self-obsessed bookworm. She loves to reading. She loves blogging. She loves all that stuff. And Toph is a competition coach, um, but he's basically like a swim surfer. Their paths wind up crossing when Amy needs some help to win a bookish competition to meet her favorite author. That winds up happening. And it's just so, it's just so fun. I really, really liked it. I love the romance. I love the characters. I love the focus on the book world. I've said that before. It was just a really, really refreshing read. And I would definitely want to go back and reread the first book in the series. But there was, I would say friends to lovers, but also like more than that. I think it was just a really, really fun look at the book world from her point of view. And I just really, really like the dynamics. And I definitely want to read the characters and the replacements crush soon. The next book I'm going to chat about in this video is Where Dreams Descend by um, Josephina and um, Janelle Angela. Sorry. That author's name wrong. I should not because they literally have nothing to do with each other. This is actually a super early read. This comes out in June. I got this from ALA. And from New York City Comic Con because I wound up meeting her at ALA. Guys, this book was so fun. It's like the perfect mix of Phantom of the Opera and Moulin Rouge. It follows this girl, this young girl, and she winds up living at a like, I would say it's kind of like, like a club. And she's convinced that she doesn't know everything about the world that she lives in. And she winds up hearing rumors about a town where there is a magician a, a magician competition. And in her world, women cannot be magicians um, in a traditional sense because it's kind of like outlawed and it's illegal. But when she makes the, the, the decision to run away and go to this town, it kind of turns her world on her head. She gets sucked up into this magical competition to be a winner. And it causes a lot of drama it was a really really fun face pass novel I think the first half of the novel was super fast paced the second half of the novel was a little bit slower but I really enjoyed it I wound up giving it four stars and I really am excited for book two I felt like it was a really unique structure of a novel the world building is spectacular that was definitely the highlight I love the dual point of view because we got a lot of point of views in this thing we got like three point of views which I really really enjoyed the ending I felt was like a little bit rushed. I wound up giving it 4.5 stars. But other than that, such a standout book and such a rich world. that One that really captured my attention. Going off of worlds that really captured my attention. This is another one that really captured my attention. And this is All the Stars and Teeth by Adeline Grace. This is the Owl Crate edition. Boy, did I really, really like this book. I also felt the same exact thing. I felt like this world, unlike all the... um um. Where Dreams Ascend was a lot easier to follow in all the stars in all in Where Dreams Ascend. You had to really focus on it. This one, I felt like she really laid out your world building really, really easily, and it was like much easier to follow. But it basically follows this character named Amora, and she has spent her whole life waiting to be crowned princess of her land. But when something goes horribly wrong in her crowning moment, she has to go on the run to try to get back her crown. And she winds up teaming up with a group of people to kind of do that. They go on a quest. And it was, and just it really opened up her, her, her eyes to what her world is like. There is a really, really pretty map in this book that I really liked. And I felt like it was really important to the storytelling because they do adventure. This cover is so pretty. I will definitely be checking out book two. It definitely like, it was definitely a book that captured my attention. 
Again, I thought the ending was a little bit rushed, which is why I only gave it 4.5 stars. But the first half of this book was so well done. I love the characters. I love the world building. And I was really, really impressed with it. After that book, the next book that I wound up reading was... Sorry, I'm looking on YouTube. Um, was actually an audiobook. And it's called P.S. I Still Love You by Jenny Han. For the... Um, to be able to watch the movie later in the month, which I'm happy. I haven't read it, watched it yet, but I will. But I actually really like this book. I thought that it was a really interesting continuation of Jenny Han's story. I found it to be super compelling. Definitely dealt with like the bullying side of it a lot more than I had originally thought. You also meet the love interest like much later in this book than I was originally planning, but I really, really love Jan John Ambrose. I still love the first love interest. I thought it was such a fun read and I really am dying to read the next one soon. It is high on my request list for the library, but I really do have to get around to watching that movie. It is high on my list, but I wound up really liking this book and I wound up giving this read four stars. I just loved Laura Jean and all of her family dynamics and then the boys and it was just such a fun read. Um, and then the next book that I wound up picking up was Winterborn Home for, for Vengeance and Valor by Ali Carter. This is an arc that I did get at New York City Comic Con, and I love Allie Carter as an author. The way that this book is pitched is it basically is um, Batman meets Annie, which I think is a perfect tagline for the story. But it basically follows this girl named April. She's an orphan. She winds up going to see this museum, and something winds up happening, and the building winds up getting burned down, and she winds up getting taken away and being brought to this hall called the Winterborn Home. Um, and some mysteries wind up unrolling that she has to kind of, like, uncover. And there is a heir that is missing, and she winds up crossing paths with that heir. And that's kind of the book. Um, like, in, like, a nutshell. The one thing I didn't like about this book is that the first, I would say the first, and this isn't that long. This is, like, you know, 314 pages. I would say the first 150 pages is all April, even though there's other characters in the book, like the other orphans. And you just, you don't get to see them at all. And I think it's very much April on her own, trying to figure out what's going on with Gabriel. But at the end of the book, they act so much like a friend group that I'm like, you did not earn that moment yet. Um, but I did like it. I didn't love it. But I'm still really invested. I want to I want to see what happens next. There was a couple of twists at the end that I really enjoyed. So I'm definitely going to read book two. It just, I felt like the characters didn't connect as soon as I wanted it to. And I felt like April was very, very isolated. But again, that's because she's old. Like, that's like her mindset. So I get it. I just wish the other characters would have like forced her out of her comfort zone a little bit more. So this book does come out on March 3rd. And I wound up giving this one three stars for a review. The next one I read was a graphic novel from the graphic novels for kids from DC, and this is called Antihero um, by um, Camera Carlos Quinn, Demetra Luna, and art by Maka Gal. Um, and this is literally a graphic novel. It follows these two characters. It follows um, Piper and and Sloane, and their lives are so different. The one thing I love about this art style is like the panels literally show their lives opposite. Piper is a young girl who winds up living with her aunt and uncle because her parents are adventuring off trying to save the world. And Sloane is living with her mom, and her mom is really, really sick. Sloane is the great is the granddaughter of the villain in the story. Um, and these two girls wind up crossing paths, and they wind up swapping literal bodies. And it kind of takes them both on an adventure of self-discovery and also dealing with their friendship dynamics. It was a book that I really, really liked. I flew through it. I thought the art style was so realistic, and I really loved the balance of it, like how they really was one page with Sloane's life, one page with Piper's life. I think I sometimes got a little bit confused, like who was in whose head at what point. But other than that, I thought it was such a really, really refreshing read, and I definitely want to read more by this from this imprint in the future, and I have got them high, high on my TBR for April. Um... The last book that I wound up finishing for the month of April, February was Havenfall by Sarah Holland. This is another book that comes out in early, early March. It comes out March 3rd. I will admit this book did let me down a little bit. Um, I didn't feel as connected to the characters in this book. Even though I love the concept and I like the world, it's only a 300-page book. And I felt like a lot of this book was set up. And I felt like there was a small cast of characters 
that I just didn't feel that connected to. So even though the world was really, really interesting and the characters compelled me, the pacing did not capture my attention as much. And I had a hard, like, I really had a hard time reading it towards the end because I was like, what is going on in this book? But basically follows this girl named Maddie. She has some drama in her past. Her mom, like, 10 years ago was co convicted of killing her brother. Maddie's, Maddie's family runs an inn that winds up connecting these three worlds together. And every summer there's a peace summit where all these worlds come together, and Maddie winds up going there for the summer. Um, but when some things start happening, she's placed unexpectedly in control of Havenfall, and what happens that night kind of transforms transforms her understanding of reality. And it just was a... I will admit, I like the world. I like the concept. I just wish it was had the, the pacing had been executed a little bit better. But I liked it enough to consider checking out book two in the future. And this, again, will be a duology by Sarah Holland. So that's all the books that I want to finish reading in February. I have a very impressive TBR for March that I hope I can accomplish. Let me know in the comments what are some books that you end up reading in February. And I'll talk to you guys next month for another wrap-up. Bye, guys.